Hello and welcome to part eight of the walkthrough of L, a mathematical adventure for the BBC Micro. Welcome to part eight of an interminable, seemingly, walkthrough. Um, and well done if you've persevered up to this point. It's um, impressive, if not foolhardy. Um, we just avoided being captured by a Drogo robot guard by entering the square root of the number on his chest. And we are now lost because I went the wrong way. Um, can I retrieve the situation? Um, I hope so. Um, we're passing through rooms we've already seen. Aha! Right, I've just encountered another Drogo robot guard. And I'm going to let him capture me by just doing inconsequential things. Uh, I dodged out of the way by saying look. I um, sort of just idled for one move and it said the guard tries to catch you in his net but you managed to dodge out of the way. I just said look again to um, get deliberately get captured, give him time to capture me. And sure enough, the guard has caught you in his net. He carries you off to a remote room in the palace. You're in a tiny attic room with no furniture. A small arched window looks down onto an orchard. There are bars across the window. It's very quiet. A previous occupant of the room... Who, I wonder? Who? I need to know this. Uh, never mind. A previous occupant of the room has scratched some numbers on one of the walls. 121, 49, 196, 25, 64. What do all those numbers have in common, boys and girls? What do they have in common? Let's try and open the window. It won't open. Let's try and open the door. The door securely locked. Aha! A Drogo robot guard comes into the room with some food. Emblazoned across his front is the number 121. Help! The guard swears at you and leaves, locking the door behind. How horribly rude! And um, how irresponsible of the Association of Teachers of Mathematics to almost encourage players of the game, children, to swear. I don't think that was their intention, nor would it actually encourage children to swear. But uh, they don't need encouragement, do they? Kids. Filthy. Anyway, um, right, he's gone. And he had some food with him. Uh, did he leave it? In the room? In the prison cell that we're in now? No, he didn't. There's nothing there. And therefore... This is the proof that we don't need any sustenance because we never come across any food that we actually eat. Of course, we do drink something later on. I uh, won't give it away. But um, no food. No food. Let's try and open the door again. Uh, the door securely locked. Try it again. We need to do something to get a robot guard to come along. And sure enough, a Drogo robot guard comes into the room with some food and blazoned across his front is the number 49. And we... Type in the square root of 49, number 7, and the guard gives a wail of terror and disappears out of sight. Now, what's happened here is that he's left the door open for us, which is a good thing. So we can go east. You're in an attic passage with doors at the east and west ends. There's a faint smell of stale kippers. Paint is peeling from the walls. It's the first time I've noticed the um, smell of stale kippers there. And why is that relevant? Uh, because... This entire experience is very fishy, um, and I don't know. I don't know. I really don't know. But we can only go east. We've already been west. You're in a green room with a single door to the west. A large chandelier hangs from the ceiling, and there are pieces of straw on the floor. A large pig is staring at you. He has a piece of paper. He has a piece of paper attached to his collar. Now, there's nowhere else we can go. There are three rooms in this prison complex. So how do we escape? How indeed? There seems to be nothing to do but to try and get the piece of paper that the pig has attached to his collar. And when we say get paper, we're asked, do you want to catch the pig? And I presume we say yes. The floor of this room is divided into 25 squares. The plan shows the position of the pig, P, and of you, why? You can move by typing up, down, left or right. 
for UDLR, the pig can move in the same way. Do you want to move first? A very naive and unthinking reaction to this question would be to say, yes, I want to move first. That's always going to give me an advantage, isn't it? So let's do that. And it says, go on then, in a kind of abrupt way, a curt way, and we shall move up to get closer to the pig. We have moved closer to the pig, but the pig makes his move and moves away. So we move right to try and capture the pig. Uh, the pig makes his move and moves right again. We move right again to try and corner the pig, but of course the pig moves left. So we move up to try and capture the pig, and he moves away. And of course you can see that there's no way that we can, in fact, catch the pig if we move first. So we have to abandon this. We go west, we leave the room, we go back into the room, and we try again. We get the paper. Um, do you want to catch the pig? Yes, we want to catch the pig. There's the floor plan again, and do we want to move first? No, of course not, because it doesn't work. So the pig makes his move, we make our move, we'll go up. The pig moves again, we'll move right to try and follow the pig. The pig has moved down, which is rather... Oh, well, of course he couldn't move anywhere else. Any move would have led to his capture, which is the whole point. So we move right to capture the pig, and you have caught hold of the pig, which squeals and wriggles. It soon breaks free, but not before you have examined the piece of paper on its collar. It has one word written on it. Newman. Spelt N-E-U-M-A-N-N. -N. Which could also, of course, be pronounced Neumann, and could well be a reference to von Neumann. So, who was von Neumann? Who was John von Neumann, or Newman? Well, he was this chap. Um, he was this chap, who has somehow... Um, this window somehow mysteriously resized itself. I mean, I'd, I'd sort of arranged this quite neatly, and uh, I do apologise again for the shambolic nature of everything I've done, ever. Um, this is John von Neumann, Hungarian-American pure and applied mathematician and polymath. He made major contributions to a number of fields, including maths, and there's a list, a huge list of mathematical fields that he contributed, contributed to. Physics, economics, computer science, and statistics, and many, many um, feathers in his cap, strings to his bow, uh, laurels, awards. And by all accounts, John von Neumann was uh, incredibly gifted mentally, as if that weren't obvious enough from what I've just said. Uh, but he had an incredibly quick and logical mind, and was in fact a genius, and could uh, perform calculations in his head at astonishing speed, and of astonishing comp complexity. And this seems to be the person to whom the Association of Teachers of Mathematics have chosen to pay tribute by almost giving his name to a pig. And... Of course, it doesn't say in the game that the pig is called Newman, but I think that's how we thought of it uh, when we first played the game at school, that the, uh, it was Newman the pig. Is there some reference here I'm missing? Please let me know. Um, because otherwise, I don't think this is an entirely um, appropriate way to pay tribute to John von Neumann. Uh, and I'll leave you to figure out why I say that. Um, and I'll leave it there, because it's, um, a very touchy subject, um, potentially. But I believe it was all done with the best of intentions, uh, with which the road to hell is paved. But, um, no, seriously, I think it was done with the best of intentions. I think it was a rather sweet tribute, in a way, to um, someone whom the Association of Teachers of Mathematics, I'm sure, would admire greatly um, for his achievements and his mental prowess. And uh, that's why they named a pig after him. Anyway, um, Neumann, Newman, is uh, what we discover written on this piece of paper attached to the collar of a pig. 
We are still trying to get out of jail, and what are we to do except try typing Neumann? Because there's nothing else we can do. There's nowhere else we can go. So we type Neumann. Suddenly it goes dark. You experience the sensation of travelling in a high-speed lift. You're in the old kitchen. We have been teleported from the prison cell to the old kitchen. And it's a magic word, in effect. And this magic word is a tribute. The usage of a magic word is a tribute to the original adventure um, by Crowther and Woods, the first text adventure game um, to ever have been written. I mean, Crowther... Um, Will Crowther invented this genre of game, and it was his his adventure game. The very first text adventure game was written for a PDP-10, I believe, a very old computer, and uh, a sort of time-sharing mainframe type of computer. Is it technically a mainframe? I'm not sure, but it was of that ilk, and it was shared, and you had to have an account to use it, and it was used mainly in academic institutions and possibly banks. I don't know. But um, it was that kind of machine. And in that game, the very first text adventure game, um, Adventure, there's a magic word which teleports you from one place to another. And this is a tribute to that. And that's not the only tribute to Crowther and Woods in this game, as we shall see. Anyway, we're back in the old kitchen, and we need to now um, get back on track. So we were on the way to a different room and I'm now going to have to wing it slightly so excuse me while I fumble about in a shambolic way and try to find where on earth is Carmen Santiago no, where on earth I am in the terrain, the geography of the game okay, this is going to be interesting isn't it? Um, I don't know if it is or not. Anyway, I believe I've located myself. And, um, oh, sorry for that. This is going well, isn't it? Um, right, I'm going to go north here from the old kitchen to the L-shaped room. I'm going to go east. I'm going to go up. We're now at the top of the spiral staircase. I'm following uh, Nick Murdoch's map that I showed you earlier. Very useful, as I said. And if I go east, um, I'm in the room of the pool, which is where I wanted to be. Thank you again, Nick Murdoch, you life saver. Uh, I do apologise for the staccato manner in which I'm speaking. It just seems to <laughs> somehow come out that way. And uh, it's rather probably because I'm trying to think on the fly. Um, what? Everyone thinks I'm fine. Nobody thinks... Oh, anyway. Uh, I'm just not good at this, and I apologise for boring you all. Uh, all none of you who are listening to this. And Anyway, um, we are in the pool room, as we w intended to be, uh, according to the walkthrough. And what we're going to do here, which we didn't do before, although if we were playing the game for real, we probably would have tried this originally. Of course, I'm using the walkthrough so that it's uh, a more efficient... <laughs> Um, playthrough of the game. It's supposed to be more efficient, but I seem to be taking longer than any reasonable human being should to play this game. Um, but anyway, if you were originally, if you were playing this game for real, you would explore every single room thoroughly when you first found it, but I didn't do that with the pool room um, because the walkthrough didn't tell me to, so I'm going to do it now. I'm going to go down in the room with the swimming pool, the empty swimming pool. I'm not drowning myself and ending it all because uh, I've had enough and... Uh, that would be understandable. Um, I have been playing this game for several days. Um, you are standing in the empty swimming pool now. It slopes down gently towards the west. On the north side of the pool is a small hole, about 20 centimetres square, which was once covered by a grating. And at this point, I am going to pause again, and I'll see you in the next part of this walkthrough. <laughs> 